Hey there, if you are tuning in the day this video is released for the first time, that is July 30th, 2024. That means my wife and I will be celebrating 30 years of marriage today. Yeah, cue the applause. Thank you. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. No, really, it's okay. Sit down. So what I thought I'd do today is give you 30 thoughts on marriage from 30 years of marriage and also a lot of experience working with couples over the last decade as well. And probably none of these are going to be like awe inspiring and oh my gosh, I never thought of that before, but hopefully will be good reminders to you of what marriage is all about. And if you want to be in it for a long haul, these are things you should probably consider. And I'm going to list them all in the description area below. So you don't have to take notes with your pen. You can just sit back and listen and go grab them all later. And since, our marriages started at the wedding altar. I'm going to start with number one right there as well. And that is this saying I do doesn't mean you can. It just means you want to, right? We are not equipped just because we say I do. We've got to learn what it looks like to be married. Number two, unrealistic expectations create unnecessary resentments. A lot of the problems you have in your marriage and I have in my marriage is an unrealistic expectation. That expectation is not met. And in the gap between what I thought I was going to get and what I actually got, I now have room for resentment. And a lot of times it's not because you really have a reason for resentment. It's just because you had an unrealistic expectation <laughs> that now has created that unnecessary resentment. Number three, intentionality is greater than chemistry. Listen, chemistry is great. It's great to have butterflies. It's great to feel warm fuzzies. But I believe every couple who wants to do this for the long haul needs to establish a relationship rhythm whereby they determine what will be happening when in the relationship to make sure that the right things are happening on a consistent basis. If you never establish a rhythm for your relationship, you are leaving it up to chance. Number four, always remain a student of your spouse. Listen, we never stop growing, so that means we can never stop learning. You may think you know your spouse well now, but what you know in this season will be different in another season, so never stop being a student of your spouse. Number five, marriage works best when both spouses are invested. Yes, you can improve your marriage by yourself, but it works best when both are willing, able, and interested in investing in the relationship. Number six, Community isn't a luxury, it's a necessity for a healthy marriage. I firmly believe every married couple needs to be surrounded by other married couples who are investing in and working in their relationship. If you don't have community, you need community. Number seven, love requires work and what worked in one season may not work in another season, right? This marriage is not a set it and forget it kind of relationship. So the rhythm that worked in this season may not work in another season. Uh, the things we appreciated and needed from each other in one season, we may not appreciate or really need from them in another season as we continue to grow. Number eight, we have over romanticized marriage and we're all paying for it. Hollywood, TV shows, movies, romance novels have caused us to buy a lie about relationship that's not actually true and many of us are discontent in our marriages because we are comparing a real life long-term relationship to some idolized idealized version of some romantic that's really more equivalent to an affair than an actual marriage so bring it back down to earth number nine every marriage has unique challenges but some struggles are universal Listen, there are some things that every marriage has to manage and deal with, and there will be some stuff that is unique to your marriage. What your friends do may not work for you, and what you do may not work for your friends. You've got to discover what works for you guys, what rhythm works for you guys. Number 10, many marriage issues are unresolvable. Learn to manage those differences. We can spend a lot of energy trying to resolve unresolvable issues. We'll get exhausted. There are many things, personality differences, lifestyle differences, perspectives on things, uh, parenting approaches that we may never resolve. We need to learn how to close the gap and manage those areas. Number 11, marriage requires us to grieve at times. Marriage is a grieving process. There will be things that you had wanted to have present in your marriage that aren't, and you have to grieve the loss of what you wish was there. 
That's part of that's every marriage. We, we cannot build a spouse, and if we could, we would have everything we ever wanted. Instead, <laughs> we choose a spouse, and there are some things that we wish were there that aren't there. We have to grieve the loss of those things if we want to maintain happy and healthy marriages. Number 12, our spouse's sanctification and growth process will lead to consequences for us. That's the dynamic of a relationship. Stuff that maybe if you're a Christian, God is working out of your spouse. If you're not a Christian, that in your spouse's growth process is being worked out of them. Sometimes as that stuff is being worked out, they'll make decisions. They'll have behaviors. They'll have habits that will negatively impact you and you will experience the consequences of somebody else's growth process or lack of growth in their lives. That's just a part of marriage. Number 13. We can create an environment that either promotes our spouse's healing or exasperates their woundedness. We're all in process. We all come to marriage with baggage. You have the opportunity to create an environment that's a safe space, that's accepting, that's appreciative, that is loving, that can either help provide an environment. You can't cause your spouse to heal, but you can provide an environment where that healing is promoted or you can create an environment where you just exasperate their woundedness. Number 14, give yourself grace and breaks from the work of marriage. Listen, we never stop working on our marriages. I'm 30 years in, we still got stuff to work on. But we also need breaks to just enjoy the relationship. Can't be all work and no play, right? So we gotta give ourselves breaks and breaks from the work of marriage. Number 15, with most issues, you didn't get here overnight and you won't get out of here overnight. So the longer you avoid stuff, the longer you put off stuff, you find yourself in an environment where it's gonna take that much longer to get back to where you wanna be, which is why I think you should often <laughs> address issues quickly so you don't have too long to get where you don't wanna be. Uh, but you didn't get here overnight when you got issues. You're not gonna get out of here overnight. Play the long game, be patient. Number 16, laugh a lot. Just have some fun, listen. We gotta laugh at ourselves, we gotta laugh at each other, we just gotta laugh in general. We gotta enjoy this thing. Number 17, boundaries are your friend with each other, with people outside the relationship, with family. Many of the problems we have in marriage are protection problems. We have not done a good job guarding our relationship, guarding ourselves from outside influences and guarding our relationship from outside influences that would negatively impact. If you don't have healthy boundaries inside your marriage of who's responsible for what, and you don't have boundaries outside of your marriage of who does and doesn't get access to you as a couple, uh, your relationship will suffer for it. Number 18, affection is also your friend. Don't stop touching, don't stop hugging. There are so many scientific benefits to touch and the release of the hormones that happen with it. Non-sexual touch and affection are key to a happy, healthy relationship. Number 19, forgive a lot, let things go, and go a step further, choose not to bring them up again, right? I know some people say forgive and forget, and we all know there's some things you can't forget, but you can choose not to bring them up again. And in essence, that is forgetting or releasing those things. Marriage requires forgiveness. Forgive a lot, give it up, let it go. Don't bring it back up again. Number 20, what gets celebrated gets repeated. So guess what? Celebrate more than you criticize. Number 21, sometimes you have to act your way back into a feeling. Right? If we always wait on our feelings to dictate our behaviors, we'll be waiting a long time. Sometimes I may not feel like doing the loving things. I may not feel loving towards my spouse. And I got to make a willful decision to act my way back into the relationship that I really want. And many times the feelings will follow. Number 21. Oh, that was 21. 22. Ah, listen, marriage is seasonal. So the bad ones aren't final and don't have to be fatal. And the good ones don't take for granted. But marriage is seasonal wherever you're at right now. If it's great, don't take it for granted. Enjoy it. Keep doing more of it. If you're in a difficult season, this doesn't have to be forever. It doesn't have to be fatal. Marriage is seasonal. Number 23, social media is fake. That couple you think is good is also in counseling with me as well. 
period. Number 24, comparison will kill your marriage. Focus on gratitude instead. <laughs> Back to the social media, quit comparing yourself to the image of other couples they're presenting to you because it's not true. Comparison will kill your relationship. Number 26, communication is key to everything else, but you have to be intentional about when and where you communicate about what. Some conversations are logistical, some conversations are conflictual, and some conversations are about connection. You can't mix those together or you will quickly find everything in your relationship being about logistical or conflict and we're no longer connecting. Number 27, prayer is your best marriage tool. Pray for your spouse and pray with your spouse. Number 28, never stop dating. It's that old adage, whatever you did to get here, keep doing to stay here. So don't stop dating once we've gotten married. Number 29, every conflict you have starts with a desire in you. So before you go charge your spouse up, take a moment to look inward and look in the mirror. The reason you're about to step into conflict is because you have a desire and that desire is not being met. And now you're going to address the person you think owes you that desire to get what you believe you deserve. So every conflict starts inside of you. Address yourself first. And lastly, number 30, marriage is the bedrock to a healthy society and community. Healthy marriages create healthy societies and develop healthy kids. So I need you to fight for your marriage like life depends on it because it does. Our communities depend on it. Your families depend on it. Your friends depend on it. Fight for your marriage. That's my 30 thoughts after 30 years of marriage. Hopefully that was helpful. Drop a comment. Give me one of your top thoughts on marriage based on however long, whether you've been married 30 seconds or 30 years, drop a comment and we can all benefit from what you'd have to say in the comment section. And happy anniversary to me and my wife. I'll see you next time.